Morning everyone. What another beautiful day in the Alps. <clears throat> Rest day today. Done six out of the last seven days hard riding. So I'm going to take it easy and relax today. A little walk around the lake. I'm going to go and see if I can get the uh, funicular up to the glacier. Have some lunch up there. And then maybe we'll talk a little bit about battery packs. What an interesting topic of conversation. In the meantime, I'm just going to show you some of the amazing scenery. Oh. Right, let's talk batteries. First of all, why would you need to be charging things? Well, you've always got your, uh, your navigation, primary navigation, so Garmin, Lazine, Wahoo, uh, whatever bike computer you're using to navigate with, uh, and to look at kind of metrics, heart rate, power output, distance traveled, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that you're going to be running permanently whilst you're riding, um, which you know could be 18, 20 hours a day. Uh, secondly, you've got lights. I'm probably going to be riding for five hours in the dark every day. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to go through tunnels. There's going to be times where you want your lights on anyway, so you always need to be able to uh, recharge your lights. Um, and then finally, most people will be carrying a phone, uh, whether it's to listen to music where legal, uh, or to take pictures, check social media, post stuff, all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, everyone's probably going to have a phone, and that probably will double double up as people's uh, backup GPS device. So for me. I use my iPhone with an app called MapOut, uh, which I use as my backup uh, navigation device. Um, and you know, sometimes if the navigation is not difficult, I will just tend to use that rather than, rather than have the track going on my Garmin. Um, <clears throat> so all of that stuff needs charging. Um, let's throw my cables around. Um, you know, especially over the course of a long race, um, anything more than 24 hours and you're going to need to charge, uh, charge your devices. So I'm going to go through what I use today. Um, now, there's two real main options uh, for charging and that's either using a Dynamo front hub uh, or using a power bank. Now, I've never used a Dynamo, so I can't talk too much about how they function, but I can talk through you know, why I choose to use a power bank and uh, talk you through some of the technology that's available today because things change quite quickly all the time. So first of all, um, looking at the, the weight of the different systems. Um, so I use uh, this, which is a Zendure X6 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. Now that will last me, um, or I can keep going with that, and my lights and my Garmin and my uh, phone for about 60 hours continuous racing. So if I'm stopping as well, then that will probably last me three days, okay? Um, that weighs about 430 grams. Uh, and then the extra piece that I'll need is the charger. I'll go into that in more detail in a bit, uh, but this is a Mu uh, USB-C power delivery charger uh, with uh, interchangeable uh, international plug sockets on it. So together combined, that weighs about 500 grams. Um, looking at Dynamo setups, um, then you're talking probably about 4 to 500 grams for the wheel uh, in terms of the additional weight of the hub uh, and everything needed with that. Now on top of that, people do tend to carry at least a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack um, to uh, charge things like phone. Uh, they can trickle charge the power bank uh, and then charge phones, Garmin's, etc. After that, so I think you know, in terms of weight wise, the this setup is going to be slightly lighter. Cost um, the power bank, this is quite an expensive power bank that cost me about 80 pounds, um, but definitely worthwhile. And I'll, I'll go into why in a minute. Uh, and the charger, again, an expensive one, um, but uh, for good reasons, that was about 40 pounds. Uh, going through duty free. I think cost of, you know, com comparison to a cost of a Dynamo setup, I think if I were to get one now, I'd probably have to spend about £400 on a new wheel and all of the, uh, all of the cabling to go with that. So for me, this was definitely a more cost effective solution as well. Let's talk about why 
this particular power bank, what I like about it. So it's 20,000 milliamp hours, which is, um, you know, that lasts quite a long time. Now what I do like about this one is you'll see it's got five charging ports. Now that's great because it means I can charge all of my things all at the same time. So if we look at this variety of cables that I've got here, um, we've got a, a USB-C to lightning cable for my phone, that can, can go in there. Um, I've got a, uh, th this is a multifunction cable, uh, one end can do USB-C and the other end is USB-C or USB-A with an adapter on. So, you know, that one, I can either plug that in like that with the USB-A and that charges my wireless headphones um, or I can use it just as a USB-C one and I use that to charge um, with the USB-C charger and that's how I can charge that up when I stop at night. Um, I've then got this lovely pink cable that I picked up uh, in an emergency in Taiwan last year. Uh, that one will then work with uh, my uh, DI2 charging block. Uh, so I run DI2, so I, on a short race, never a problem. Uh, on a longer race like uh, TCR, then yes, I'm gonna need to potentially recharge that. So that allows me to recharge that. I then have a second USB-A micro with a, a right angle uh, adapter on it. So that one can go in there. This I'll tend to leave charged or plugged in permanently. Uh, and I'll actually wire this through my bags because that one then plugs into my Garmin and I can leave my Garmin uh, permanently attached to the battery. Now, what am I missing here? I'm missing my uh, main front light charger, which is a uh, Exposure Diablo. So again, that has just has a USB cable, uh, which I'll leave permanently connected in. Uh, and so when the battery goes in the pa into the uh, frame pack, I can plug my, um, my Garmin charger and my light charger in and have those permanently wired in, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, my other front light is, uh, I've got two of these uh, Lazine strip lights. That's a 300 lumen front light. That's a 150 lumen rear light. I have two on the back and two on the front. And these just plug in very simply. Like that. So you can see with having five, let me just take that one out and replace that back with the phone one. Having the five charging ports means that I could charge my phone, my Garmin, my DI2, or that could be my front light, and then two of my other lights all at the same time. And that just helps me stay on top of everything being charged. There's nothing worse than finding that four of your lights have run out and you've got, you can only charge one at any one time, which is a problem if you've only got one or two um, USB sockets in your battery, okay? So yeah, that's really good. Charge a lot of things all at the same time. Now it's important when you're looking at uh, power banks is be aware of how it charges. So traditional USB-C or original USB-A, uh, USB uh, which is these uh, sockets here using that kind of charging plug uh, that would charge at uh, up to 12 watts the, the wattage very simply is the power the plug is going to supply to the power bank or indeed power bank can then supply out to the devices you are charging and similarly to when we're riding it's a measure of energy per second so um, if you have a higher wattage charger, it's going to be putting more energy per second into your power bank, i.e. it charges faster. Uh, normal USB-A charging, uh, that would charge it up to 12 watts. Now that would mean something like this, uh, of this size, would charge in about 11 or 12 hours, which that's, that's a challenge because we're never stopped for that long. And if you never fully recharge it, there's always a danger that you're going to run out and indeed uh, in my first ever ultra race that is what happened i i ran out of power because i couldn't stay on top of it because it didn't charge quick enough um then they started to introduce or there was a standard introduced called quick charge um quick charge two and then quick charge three now that does some uh clever things with the, the rates of charging but broadly that would charge at 18 watts 
So that would improve things. Um, this would maybe charge in, in eight hours, uh, maybe nine hours. However, the thing to look for these days is look for USB-C, especially USB-C power delivery. I don't know if you can see that, uh, that's PD hub. So USB-C is a new, um, a new USB standard. It uses a different plug standard, which you can see there. Uh, now the good thing about it is USB-C uh, power delivery uh, has uh, clever communication between the, the charging port and the charging device to allow it to negotiate the highest charging rate possible. Now in the case of uh, this battery, this battery will charge at a maximum rate of 45 watts. So if you have a corresponding charger that will meet that, then that means you can charge this really, really quickly, which is what I have here. So this is a USB-C charger. And again, this is USB-C power delivery. Uh, which will output at 45 watts. So those two are nicely matched up. And what that does mean is this 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack can recharge not in uh, 12 hours, not in eight or nine hours, but that will recharge in three hours. Now that is ideal for when I'm doing a multi-day ultra race because you're probably gonna stop for three to four hours a night, which means that even if this is fully depleted, I can recharge that overnight and be ready to go the next day. Um, I keep the front light, I keep the Garmin charging during the day, so when I've finished, they will be fully charged. As I'm eating that night, I can plug these in, get these fully charged up, charge this overnight, and then I'm good to go the next day. All in all, it's a very practical, cost-effective, and really functional way of me keeping everything charged. I have looked at dynamos, but I think there's just too much to go wrong compared to this. If this fails, then it's not that difficult to find an electronic store and pick these up. When I was racing in Taiwan and I had issues, uh, every 7-Eleven would sell spare power banks and uh, spare charging uh, plugs. So it's never a problem to replace. If something goes wrong with your dynamo hub and you've got a, a hub dynamo hub specific light, then uh, you know things could go uh, a little bit awry. If I was doing something where I couldn't guarantee I'd be near a uh, power socket every at least every three days, then I would think about moving towards a dynamo front hub. But for now, for all the races I'm doing, for TCR, uh, for everything like that, yeah, then this is my setup. USB-C power delivery, 45 watt charger. USB-C power delivery, 20,000 milliamp hour power bank with five charging blocks, everything else charges off USB, small set of cables, job done. I can stay seen and I know where I'm going. Right, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you like these videos, then do subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and hit the notifications button. Uh, then you'll get an update whenever I've got a new video out. And now it's time for me to go and get that lunch that I've been looking forward to all day. See you later.